passage from, from last week's study, and thank you guys for marking up the text. I don't even know how many of you still have that piece of paper, but we kind of we, we blew up John 11, and we, we, we broke it down in a lot of different ways, but there's a passage from the text that I just couldn't leave behind, and uh, by far it's one of the most significant things that Jesus did and had the power over. Uh, Christ had the, the ability to forgive sin, and he has the power over death. That's a big deal. I mean, that's a, that's a game changer for mankind. And so be turning to, to John 11, and as, as, we, as we look at this text in John 11, uh, 44 and 45. Matter of fact, if somebody would, uh, would, be, would be willing to read that, I'm going to open up in prayer, but... The, the, if I could say the, 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 the message today and the sentence, and it's something I, w- I want you guys to just, I want it to resonate with you. I want you to get this, is that you're no longer slave to sin. You're no longer slave to sin. I don't know what else you're going to hear in the next 20 minutes, but with Jesus Christ, his ability to forgive sin and his power over death in the grave, you're no longer slave to sin. So let, let's open up in prayer. Father, thank you for the morning. Thank you for this time together. Uh, I just pray that you take this passage from your word and the Holy Spirit, that uh, it would not be my words, but it would be yours, and that you'd speak to the hearts of men and women. Uh, God, let us live in the fullness uh, and in the power of your resurrection. Uh, just be glorified in what's said and done here today with these young adults. God, take their lives and reach this planet uh, for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, John 11. Somebody read, uh, read 25 and 26 aloud. Okay, go. <clears throat> Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Okay. Though he were dead, yet shall he live. I mean, that, that's amazing. Uh, I heard a testimony of a, of a, a loved one that was, this, well, they, they, it was terminal. They were passing away in the hospital. And he wrote it on the, you know how the nurses have a dry erase mm-hmm. board in the hospital room? Uh, he's reminded, hey, mom, just remember you know what, you'll never die. I mean, they wrote this verse. and it, I mean, we say, well, yeah, Tom, but the, the, our, if we know, I mean, cemeteries, man, people die, Tom. I mean, yeah, but the death, that, that's just a physical death. In Christ, and what we're going to be talking about today, you know, we know based on the, the authority and the truth of the Word of God, well, we know that all men live forever, I, and I... I I kind of, I don't, I don't jest about this, but, I, but one way you could say it is you, you do live forever. We are eternal beings, but it's, are you going to live in, are you going to be in the smoking or non-smoking section of eternity? I mean, that's, that's a pretty sobering thought, that we are eternal. The Christ we're talking about in Jesus Christ is what he came for. So, um, historically, you guys, we know the story of Lazarus. Lazarus was sick. They, they sent word to Jesus. He waited a couple of days, right? You guys remember the story from last week? We, we read a pretty long passage. Um, he waited a couple of days, and then Lazarus died, and then after four days, Jesus shows up, and, uh, and he, brings, he brings him to life publicly. This isn't the first resurrection of, of the dead that Christ does, but this is the first time Jesus knows He's coming into Jerusalem, and at this time, if you'll fast forward as you read, right after this, they're going into the Passover, and then you're going to see the crucifixion happens with Christ. So this is significant in the ministry of Christ because he's going to do this in the presence of all the Jews and the religious leaders, and they they are going to hate it, and this will lead... To his death. The other times that you've seen him raise people from the dead, he would make, okay, class, you guys all get out in the hallway. Uh, Michael's just sleeping, man. We're going to wake him up, right? I mean, he didn't make a big deal out of it. There was one time uh, 
Jesus and the disciples are just coming into town, and there's a, there's a funeral procession, and the mom's sobbing. I mean, how, this is just bizarre. You don't even hear much about the story, but Jesus just stops the funeral, goes over, hey, your son lives. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> Who was that guy? What happened? Uh, but he didn't make a big deal out of it. Uh, certainly this time he does because he's like, I, I am the Messiah. I am the prophesied one. And this is, I'm going to show you that I have power over death. He does it. It propels the Jewish leaders into a fury because they, he has influence over the people. Uh, so they're determined to kill him. Doctrinally, doctrinally, prophetically, this passage in John I mean, this is, this is Jesus Christ bringing in the kingdom. This is physically Christ on earth. If the Jews would believe at the resurrection of Lazarus, if the Jews would have only believed, oh my gosh, this is him. This is the one the entire Old Testament's been telling us about, that we're zealous and we study and we keep the law. This is him. At that moment, man, he would have, it would have been heaven on earth. The kingdom would have come in. I don't know if you guys realize that. D2 students, who, who, who was signing up for D2? You, you know what? You're, you're going to study kingdom of God, kingdom of heaven. At this very moment in John 11, they're both present. They're both, the physical and the spiritual kingdom are present in, in John 11 because Christ is on earth. He's physically ready to bring in both and, and spiritually ready to bring in both. But, of course... Man has free will, and we know what the Jews do. Uh, they're, they, they're messing up his religious system. Kill this guy. Inspirationally, the Bible has three applications. You guys tracking with me? Historical, doctrinal, inspirational. You guys, does that, that resonate? I mean, I, I mention it. It's just rules of Bible study. We, uh, again, as you study your Bible, as you're students of the Bible, you can prove this. We can lay these things out and... Our D2, our D2 students, I look forward to you guys taking the class because you guys will be able to help us with our What Does the Bible Say? We'll let you guys bring in toolbox talks from D2 on when you hit the How to Study the Bible portion. But inspirationally, I want us to consider the text as a clear example of the gospel message. Salvation to mankind it has come. And... Uh, how according to scripture, you and I are absolutely free from the grip of sin, death, and hell if we re receive this beautiful, powerful gift that Jesus Christ has to offer. Inspirationally, don't miss this. Inspirationally, this, this picture should motivate you all this coming week. It should motivate you today to like, man, I have that in Christ. I have that kind of power in my life. This next slide, I don't even like this slide because I don't care for this movie. Because this was The Walking Dead. It's a video game, I think, now. Yeah, but it was a movie <laughs> about Walking Dead. Uh, to my gamers, maybe some sick TV series watchers, you guys watched them. <laughs> maybe you watched all 10 up series of this. Uh, I but, uh, so, I mean, this thing, this, this was, I watched a few, I'm like, Man, zombie movies, I don't know, you know, but uh, uh, it was, it was interesting, uh, the graphics were awful, but, uh, but the idea, the idea that this, you guys know the, the storyline, probably to every zombie movie, I guess, um, but the plague hits the planet, and everybody's basically walking dead, and they, they have this awful pain, and unless they, like, chew off your leg, they're not, they, I don't know why they want to eat human flesh, or I don't know, it's just, but they go around they, and they want to try to plague everybody else. Weird movie, but, uh, but as a Bible student, man, as a Bible student, um, what happened in Genesis 3 to mankind? You guys know there, you know there was a plague that hit planet Earth? You guys, Bible students? Genesis 3, the serpent talking to this lady named Eve, and uh, God set this thing up perfect. Man and woman, they, by free will, they chose to disobey God. Sin <coughs> plagued this entire planet. You were born with it. As beautiful as that little slide with the baby dedication thing, 
that little baby is born into sin. I mean, now he's safe. He's safe to an age until sin becomes exceedingly sinful and he, he can account for, wow, I'm a sinner and need a savior. I consciously understand that. So he's safe as an infant, but it's not like that baby just did this horrible thing and one day he's a sinner. That baby, because he's born flesh and blood, is born into sin because this weird, creepy thing called sin has plagued this planet. Uh, and we know, we know that the author behind that and what he's out to do. Uh, plague has swept the earth. It originated in the garden. It's called sin. And without the antidote of salvation, we're nothing but dead men walking. You realize that? Uh, so I just, that's, we, we think that this is life. We think that, that this is, uh, man, we're all good. But the reality, you shine the light of God's word onto mankind, and you see a totally different thing. So dead men walking, uh, here, here is the reality and urgency of this life. It's why we go. It's why we served at Bibles and Breakfast yesterday. Thank you guys for coming out. Big help. Uh, you guys are, I mean, such an encouragement as you're giving away Bibles and encouraging people, sharing the gospel, serving food. You know, I mean, Jesus, he didn't come just to show up and, and preach hellfire and damnation. I mean, he came to seek and save, and he did that through, through loving people and having relationships. So that's why we do Bibles and breakfast. It's why we, we go to the malls and we go out and we go soul winning every Saturday, 11 to 1. We go out and talk to the community. Why? Because there's a plague on planet Earth, and, and this Earth is not, we're dead men walking without the antidote of salvation. Um, do this for me. Next time, next time you're in a big venue, I don't know if it'd be on your workplace, if it'd be on your, your college campus, if it'd be, I don't know, uh, uh, maybe a stadium with a bunch of people. Um, just take a moment and look at the crowd and think about Matthew 7. Matthew 7, 22. Sc one of the scariest verses in the Bible to me. Matthew 7, 22. He says, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have we cast out devils? And in thy name have we done wonderful works? And then in verse 23, someone read 23. You guys get that? I'm gonna let me let me let me do this. Matthew seven, it's twenty-three. Uh, depart from me, ye workers of iniquity, for I never knew you. And when he when the Lord says many in the Bible. Uh, when the creator of the universe says many, that, that's, that's a big deal. Uh, let's see here. Here we go. Then will I profess unto them, I, nev I never knew to you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. So many. Uh, I can't help it. Everywhere I go, I mean, I don't know how you guys drive down the highways. I don't know how you sit in traffic jams. I don't know when you're in airports, when you're just traveling around the world, whatever you're doing, how you view people. But, you know, I see that, I see that lady there. I see this man here. Uh, I, saw, I saw some younger kids in this. I mean, these are all individual souls of men and women, people, friends, family, neighbors, classmates, coworkers. And there's a day, there's a judgment day coming, you guys, that... Uh, Depart from me, I never knew you because of this plague called sin. So, man, I thought we were talking about Lazarus. How did we get on this? Um, so it's urgent. I, it's urgent, and it begins at the cross. No, Jesus Christ came to seek and save. Luke, uh, Luke 19.10, I love the passage. He came to seek and save. That's why Christ came, uh, and it's why we need to go. This is all leading up to... Jesus Christ said, I'm the resurrection, I'm the life. It's very significant what he says at this tomb in John chapter 11. Um, don't know who this lady is. We tried to drown her at the lake last week. Um, 
But, but I, I asked the question, when you guys were all in the boat and we were in the water, you know, when Christ hung on the cross in John 19, 30, before he died, he says it's finished. It's finished. It didn't require water baptism. It didn't require no more works. It didn't require nothing else. Jesus Christ says it's finished. That, and then we know, as we, as we read on in Scripture, that, that Jesus Christ was that ultimate sacrifice. He finished the work so that you and I could have life, that we're no longer plagued with this zombie apocalypse, apocalypse of sin. Uh, we have life, and we have it more abundantly. But what does that mean? What does that look like? Um, the crucified life. It's a Christian-y thing. Man, brother, you just got to live that crucified life. Like, what the heck is that? What does it mean? How do, you, how do I do that? What, what is the crucified life? Uh, how does it work? Um, well, let's, let's look at it. Uh, it, begins with, it begins with John 11, 43, man. Uh, that's, this is a, I hope that all of you have had a John eleven forty three moment. That I, I, I was not seeking God when he found me. I mean, God just showed up in my life. And, and I just, for, for, for the first time in my life, I saw myself as a sinner, as a need for a Savior. I think I, for somehow, and I was in a cemetery, so maybe it was the walking dead, you know, uh, it was speaking to me out of the grave. But I really did. I just saw myself for the depravity that, man, I can't do this on my own. I have no, God, what is this life about? And the gospel came to me. Christ spoke to me through the gospel message, just like, here in, in the text in 1143, but he cried with a loud voice, and he said, Lazarus, come forth. Lazarus has been dead. Now he's alive. Uh, so it's done. He's called you from the dead. You've received the new life of salvation, eternal life, born again. I'm a Christian. I mean, there's a lot of words we use for that. <laughs> Bible words are born again, saved. Uh, but a, a lot of people, in the, in especially the U.S., will say, well, I'm Christian. Well, I'm Christian because I was born into a Christian family. No, you know what? Christ-like, to have Christ in you is born again. You've exchanged your dead life for new life in Christ. Um, Galatians 2.20. I'm going to learn how to play chords on a guitar to this verse. Uh, but we, we've sung it before. Galatians 2.20, I'm crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but uh, Christ liveth in me. In the life which I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. That's what Christ did on the cross for you and I. That's the life-giving resurrection power that he, that he illustrated in John 11 with Lazarus. Lazarus, come forth. Lazarus is dead. Can you imagine? You talk about a hangover. I mean, you, you've been, I, I don't know, I think of like Weekend at Bernie's, or you guys probably know that movie, but he's all, but being dead for four days, I don't know how Lazarus, how his dying moments were, if he just passed out, if he just went unconscious, uh, if it was some painful, awful thing, but to be in the grave four days, can you imagine waking up um, and Somebody grab me that roll of toilet paper back there. This ought to be interesting. We need a test dummy. A test dummy. Huh? Okay, and I need two other test. I need two other dummy wrappers. <laughs> uh, okay, so I'm going to keep talking. Now don't don't suffocate him, but uh, and don't and just 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 wrap him up. Wrap him up. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Hey, I'll, I'll, I'll help get you started. We need one on this side, though. Oh, you know, man, you're having a runner in your toilet paper. Okay. Here we go. Okay. okay. So you got another wrapper. So, um, keep wrapping him. I want to talk. <laughs> So I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Lazarus has been dead four days. Lazarus come forth. Uh, Colossians 1.27 says, well, somebody read. Someone look up Colossians 1.27 for me. 
Colossians 1.27. And they, yeah, it's a mystery. This thing's a mystery, guys. And when you talk about it to people that, are, that, that don't know their Bible, it's just a mystery. What are you talking Is about? What's Col- Colossians 127. Go ahead. To them God willed to make known and what are the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Okay, this mystery among the Gentiles. You know, there's several, a mystery in the Bible. Man, I mean, we'll study them out. They're awesome studies, but there's just some things to the lost world that's like, man, what does that even mean? That, that is, that is that's, that's a mystery. I don't understand it. And he tells them, here's the mystery, Christ in you, the hope of glory. You, were, you who are dead, you who are cursed with sin have Christ in you, and it's your hope. Um, do we have a Sharpie in here? I have one. Uh, yeah, we're in that drawer. There's a Sharpie? Or yeah, the, blue, the thin blue ones are Sharpie. Make sure he doesn't move. Oh, the, Make sure he doesn't move. This ought to be interesting. Yeah. Well, and, and you know what? I don't, I don't even know that we have very good zombie wrapping going on. But, uh, what? Whoa. That was good. What? <laughs> so we're born into sin, okay? Lazarus is dead. Mankind, you're born into sin. Wrap his face. Wrap his face. Wrap his face. Uh, but, but they did say, they did, they did put a, they did put a, like a napkin. They said a nap. Kind of, they put something. Put a Kleenex away. Okay. 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 So, so this is probably a bad illustration of Lazarus coming out of a grave. But, but, we, but he's a dead man. He can't see. He's bound up. A matter of fact, the sisters, what was one of the complaints or fear that the sisters had? What did they say? Huh? He stink. He stinketh. Uh, I think my mom would say that when we come in from playing as little kids. You know? And after all that balm and perfume and so so I so I think what I would like and I, I don't know that we could properly illustrate it, but you're born you're basically born in sin, dead. And so this wrapping really indicates sin that you're born with. Uh, if we could write, what's a, what's a sin? Somebody name a sin. Greed. Huh? Greed. Lust. Murder. Stealing. Michael. <laughs> I'm not sure he was an archangel. So. I mean, uh, what is it? Should, should we come up and write it? Or? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah. Everybody, hey, everybody, come up and write one sin on Michael. <laughs> <laughs> Then yeah. we're going to be covering all their. Yeah, well, yeah, you have to. Right. That's not right. 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 Yeah, that's fine. We can for for the sake of this, you guys can stop. Yeah, tuck it in somewhere. Call it good. Don't move. That feels really weird. Don't move. I guess we could at least got his hair. What is that? No pun intended. No. Probably one of the few people actually right up there. Yeah. There's so many. Sorry, Michael. You, you didn't know you what you were getting into. I should have. I should have prepped him. I just, I just wanted to answer the call. <laughs> uh, who wants to be a dead dummy? I'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, she's just got to be willing. Okay, so I'm seeing hate. Oh, what's some other ones? Adultery. I'm seeing stealing, lust. What in the world? Who wrote on your face? Yeah, it, it's a scare. It's a scream. Uh, anybody else? Anything? Come on. You can name oh, your fr- you can name your neighbor's sin, not your own. Yeah. We all know we all know the sin of our neighbor, right? Uh, but okay. And so, with, with that in mind, uh, Jesus said in John eleven forty four. Uh, now. 
realize when we started, we started out in John 11, Jesus said, I'm the resurrection and I'm the life. And in John 11, 44, he called, he, he's already called Lazarus out of the tomb. Lazarus, come forth. Tom, February 10th, 1980, Tom, come forth. That was, I mean, for me, born again on that day. I don't know your date. I don't know your time. It's not even, I, I would say don't even get hung up on the date and time, but there should be an event in your life that when you stand at heaven's gate, why should I let you into my heaven? Because there was an event that happened, and somebody said, Tom, come forth, and I answered the call, and I received Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. But I think it's interesting what he says, and it will illustrate the rest of the message today. Jesus said, 1144, Jesus said unto them, Loose him and let him go. Loose him and let him go. So who can loose, who can loose our poor? <laughs> so he once was dead. So he's, dead in, he's dead in sin. He's always been dead in sin. Jesus cries out, Lazarus, come forth. He breathes this new life. He doesn't fix the old man in this, in this, in this situation. What Christ is doing, Christ didn't just put a Band-Aid on the old man. Christ just didn't heal, heal a sick man. He raised a dead man to life. And so somebody loose him. Loose him. No, loose him. Good, no, loose him and he's let him go. Let Come him. on. Somebody loose him. I know I did. Don't. We got <laughs> loose him. Somebody <laughs> loose him. Break the chains. Don't unwrap the chains. Break the chains. There we go. Yeah. Okay. All right. He's alive. Okay. You only nine fifty. No, we gotta clean this up, right? <laughs> no, hey, just leave, just, just leave it. Yeah, you're, you're good. Just leave it. Okay. Um, that now that's probably the worst illustration. But I'm trying to paint a picture here of what significantly. I mean, Jesus Christ is the resurrection and the life. He made a dead man live. With with the cross. Now the cross. This 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 event with Lazarus, as we read, is leading up to the crucifixion. We know Christ died, he was buried, he rose again. And because of the resurrection, each one of us, we were dead men walking. Now because of the resurrection, Christ can call us out. And Tom, Priscilla, Christy, Tyler, the college and Harvest, all of the world. Jesus said, I came to seek and save. I want... I'm, it's not an exclusive club. I want all. Whosoever will may come. I mean, you know, you'll get some people say, well, I just wasn't, God just wasn't looking for me. You know, only the chosen ones go. Yeah, you know what? Jesus, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him, whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. You guys say, I'm dead to that. Say that. I'm dead, I'm dead to that. To that. Come on, I'm dead to that. Say it. I'm dead to that. I'm dead to that. Romans 6, 11. I'm dead to that. I want you guys to, someone is selling you a lie as a Christian that, you know what, you're bound to your sin. Boy, you just can't overcome. You're, Christ, Christ just wasn't enough. You've got to work harder. You've got you to gotta run faster. You've got to jump higher. You've got to... You gotta you gotta go Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday. You gotta do all this work. You gotta keep the law. No, you know what? I'm dead to that. Because when, when Jesus says, Lazarus come forth, when when Christ comes into your life and gives you I'm the resurrection and the life, he that old man is dead. You are no longer bound to sin. Someone read Romans 6, 11 to 14. You can read it from the screen, you can read it from your Bible. But this is huge. Likewise, likewise, reckon ye are also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey and obey it in the lust thereof. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as uh, instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you, ye are not under the law, but under grace. You're under grace. I'm telling you, if that's not underlined, highlighted, tattooed somewhere on your body, I don't know. Uh, man, get this. You're, you're dead to sin and you're alive in Christ, but the old sin nature, the world, the flesh, the devil, he wants, he wants to hold you captive. I, 
the beginning slide kind of had this broken chain. I want you to know Christ gave you new life. He gave you new life. He offers new life at Calvary. And when that new life comes in, you're no longer a slave to it. You, you are in Christ. It's, it's the hope of glory. It's that mystery that we just read about. But there's so you don't have to do nothing but just by faith believe that and act on it. The, the way that you live the crucified life is when you, when you struggle with whatever, whatever sin had, had you bound up, whatever sin that, that, that you run across in your life, when sin comes knocking, I mean, i got to tell you guys, I'll confess to you, I probably say this daily, and if I'm not saying it daily, then I'm not, probably, I'm not walking in the crucified life. I have to remind myself every day, I'm tempted with something, you know what, I'm dead to that. I, I'm not that man anymore. I'm not bound to that. I don't have to do this anymore. I'm alive in Christ. I'm dead to that, Romans 6, 11 to 14. I claim scripture. I believe God's word to be true. And you know what? He constantly, it's like a, it's just a, a, a walk of faith. I have walked through life just reminding myself, I'm, I'm no longer a slave to sin. I'm, I have new life in Christ. Um, Put off and put on in your Bible. Let's take, uh, let's take with the, the time that's left in uh, at least the next 10 minutes. Uh, I want you guys as a group individually look at what the Bible says about put off and put on. When it comes, uh, I just, you, you can look up that phrase, you can look up that word. What does the Bible say about putting off and putting on? There's some things in your life, if you realize this crucified life I'm talking about, there's things that, you know what, put it off. Loose him. Let him go. Put it off. Uh, take it and throw it in the trash. Be done with it. And put on some things. So uh, work, I can show you, there's, there's some passages. I, you know, you can you, use the tools we've got on the table. Use some, some of the how to study the Bible things that we've done. But look for what the Bible says about putting off and putting on as a Christian. What are some of those things? Work together on that. I'm going to get a shot of coffee. Put off, put on. Yeah, that's one of them, right? You guys ever been at have you ever been at home or I don't know been by the trash can and it just stinks yeah. <laughs> like somebody take out the trash you know we're just looking for things that's that's kind of the concept that I want you to consider when it comes to this old man new man that old man is dead and he stinks and there's nothing there is you're not bound to him and you need to just take the trash out. You need to throw it away. You're dead. You're dead to it. You need to get rid of it. Put it off and put it on. Um, yeah, you know what? Yeah, you guys can do that. Uh, hey, so let's, uh, somebody with good writing. How about we have a put off and a put on half to the board? You want different colors for each one? Yeah, yeah. Oh. oh, yeah, yeah. You know what? Here, let's go put off with work. Maybe we'll put off with black. You know. Put on with blue. blue. Put on with blue. There we go. Oh, yeah. Put on. Okay, whatever. We don't care. Just, just do it. Put it on the board. That's what we want to say. Put it on the board. Put it on the board. Put it on the board. What are you? Put off and put on. Hey, divide the board in half, Michael. Just write the. Uh, put, a, put a big line right down the middle. So we want to put off and put on. Let's like paraphrase it. Or something. Uh, yeah. 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 Yeah.
You know, I, I want you guys to be good students of the word, and uh, I mean, I could just sit up there and blab away, but I want you guys to see this. I want you to see it for the truth that it is. You can apply it in your life. Anything else? Anybody else find it any? Okay, what are we putting on? Yeah. Wait. The color, oh well. It doesn't matter. Oh yeah, we're... we're, we're Yeah, I mean, th th there's certainly, and there's, there's, a, there's a lot of put on, put off in the Old Testament. And, and, and I want, uh, find them all, find them all specifically for the context of Christ and Lazarus and new life. I'm going to focus us on the New Testament and the dispensation, the church age in which we live. But man, study it all because there's some cool things about putting off and putting on. I like how this one's in the middle. I wonder why. What? Oh, there's one in the middle. I wonder who it is. Uh, yeah, you gotta check it out. Yeah. Let's figure out why. Get your put off and put on. 
all in the board. Oh, got Shay. Obstacle course here. Yeah, we got the keyboards. We're, we're, we're looking for the upgrade. <laughs> hey, I did meet with the I did meet with the hey. principal at Blue Springs High School. I told them they were not to remove that offer for their performing arts center. Yeah. For our Wait, class. I, I so, uh, I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready to make the meeting you guys are. Oh, well, it'd be weird to put well, more people sure. in a 200 I'm person sure. auditorium, but oh, let's, let's, let's take oh, let's, one let's take 30, 40 people. <laughs> really? In there. They'll, 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 they'll sorry. Use Thank their you for community <laughs> center. They have a small, a small performing arts uh, center right at the front of the building here, uh, next to the, yeah, next to the cafeteria. That we, we could <laughs> use this now. Or the cafeteria, but the cafeteria would require a lot of setup and tear down every week. The little community center would be easier. Is that what I put? Is well, the three ten up there? No, it's not. Wait, is that what I mean? That's three nineteen. It says the Latin Colossians. How many are you looking for? Oh, oh just no, 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 we would have to say whatever. whatever. Hey, uh, we're gonna yeah, we'll Tom. I don't think we can, we won't be able to exhaust it here, but I just want, I'm, I'm, man, praise the Lord. All the ones you guys are finding. Tom, got three questions. Yeah, I need to write on your side. Okay, what do you got? Let's see. Matthew 27, 28. Oh, I saw that. It says, and they stripped him and put him on the same scarlet robe. Yeah, I saw that. But in John 19, 2, it says, um, you know, they put the, the crown of thorns and put it on his head. And they put on him a purple robe. Mm -hmm. Royalty or majesty. Or isn't, aren't they talking about the same event? Like them, when they down yeah. Jesus? So have you ever have you ever looked at uh, have you ever taken Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John I and like just, and, and compare? Yeah. We, we try to do that one in is creation. The, one is the in the flesh. <laughs> one is that's the different. That's the yeah. Effort, like, Check it out. Yeah. yeah. So so analyze. So look at the whole story. Yeah. I want to show you. This find story. that find that yeah. event and that time frame yes. and then and then. I think you I think you can draw a conclusion on what on, on what it says. All right, oh look at you go. All right. We're gonna leave the toilet paper in the floor for the cleaning crew. They're gonna think, what did them right, guys do? Man, awesome. <laughs> yeah, somebody's got the flu in that car. <laughs> that poor guy's been blowing his nose. Yeah, they're gonna say, wow, he's struggling with. Uh, oh my god. <laughs> yeah, exactly. uh, okay. No, no, you're good. So, I want, I want you to know this, class. I, I want you to know that Jesus Christ did the work. It's a finished work. He gives the new life. But because we're still in the flesh, because we still have this mortal body, it, it, isn't, it isn't that... I've got to do these things to achieve holiness. I, I'm, I'm doing, I'm doing, Christ did all the work. You have Christ in you. You are born again. You have a new life. You have the Holy Spirit of God within you. The Holy Spirit tabernacles with you. Your body is the temple. Uh, but you're, but just think that you're still wrapped, you, you still are bound in, in this sinful, all this sinful body of the flesh. And so every time you take a step of faith and you say, you know what, I'm not bound to that anymore. You're tearing away one thing of this thing of your old man and you're putting it in the trash. You know what, I'm dead to that. You're tearing it away. And so you're, when you're putting off these things, it isn't that you're gaining more new life. You're just putting off the old man and you're coming to the realization of the new life that you have in Christ that one day coming soon to a theater near you, Jesus Christ is coming back and we're going to be out of here. Yeah. We are going to be like Christ. We're going to have a glorified body. No more struggles with the flesh, our sin nature. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be an amazing day. 
but, but we're being conformed to that image every day that we're still left here on planet Earth. And the more things of that old flesh that you'll just put off, the more of your new life is revealed. So um, put off and put on. You guys, uh, give me some, give me some, some, some of your observations. Can you put an arrow for Ephesians 4.22 to put off to in right. the middle? Oh, Ephesians 4.22. I put it on what it said. Middle, up, 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 higher, right, down, 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 right there, right there. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Follow the rest of the passage. Yeah. Draw directly yeah. to the next one right yeah. there. There you go. And so what about Saul, Arms, David, that one? Yeah, it's already <laughs> attached to the first one. Oh, is so, it wrong? I put it on the wrong side. Just ignore it. Okay. It's okay. <laughs> so just some observations about about putting off and putting on. I, I mean, are you... You guys, are, did, is this communicating? Is this making sense? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is it? Yeah. You guys, I mean, I, you, Jesus Christ is the resurrection. He's the life. He gave you new life. You have Christ in you, the hope of glory. Um, so what are some things we need to put off? Got a lot of putting on to do. What do we put off? Um, sorry. Go ahead. Um, and Ezekiel 16 is talking about how God is walking by Israel and finds them bloody and like alone and cast out by the world and he washes them and you know clothes them and everything and in this verse it says and when I passed by thee and saw thee polluted in thine own blood I said unto thee when thou wast in thy blood live yea I said unto thee when thou wast in thy blood live so mm-hmm. it's like God is is taking us from the old man and, and making us new and alive yeah and boy, I mean, and that's a picture that you'll see from Ezekiel all the way through the Old Testament. You'll see, you'll see dry bones uh, gain flesh. Um, <coughs> golly, what time is it? It's 10 after. Are they out or no? Okay, not yet. Um, put off, put on. And you talk, let's talk about it. You guys, talk. what do you, what do you think? What's, what's something I can put on? What, what are some things I can put off or things I can put on? Tell me. So what I did is that I did like I looked at Col- Colossians three eight and it had like the like the whole list of putting off like oh. mask, malice and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's just kind of like related to how um, when you're reborn or like from Jesus Christ and stuff, how you could just kind of like you still sin, but you have the ability to put off. Yes. To other people. Yeah. So I don't know. I just, it was just related to it. So yeah. Oh my gosh. So Priscilla working in a construction environment most of my life. You know, most construction guys can't talk without, like, I think every second or third word has to be a curse word. <laughs> and a matter of fact, the whole content of the conversation is more curse words than subjects. And uh, so filthy communication uh, is, is, is an easy one, right? Put it off. Put it off. Come on. You're born again. You're the, you're, it's Christ in you, and you're talking like a sailor. What's up with that? And it, it does now, filthy communication, filthy communication could be gossip it could be evil hurtful things about uh there's a ton in this one priscilla right put off he does so put off oh and by the way here's the list uh <laughs> anger wrath malice blasphemy filthy um what else what put off put on anybody there's a lot of verses about like putting on armor even in the old testament it's not necessarily like salvation related but often in terms of like Samuel and Kings the wars that happened in one of the passages it talks about they they gathered all the men that were able to bear armor Mm. and that's who they used to go into battle with and they smote their enemies and they were victorious and so it's I like that is able to bear armor yeah that's that's good where where did you see that here in there's Just that concept. that concept, yeah. And you don't send them into battle until they could bear armor. <laughs> right, right. So, 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 okay. So you, you're you're this new man in Christ, and it's like there's a war raging, and you're gonna run out in your slides and your basket <laughs> your basketball shorts and your tank top. <laughs> you know, uh, put uh, somebody was some in Ephesians, yeah. put on the whole armor, right? Man, you got you got to put it on. You got you got to be ready. You got to be ready for battle. Don't they 
thing I thought was interesting was um, in Leviticus, I put it in the middle there, it was whenever the priest was taking out the ashes, they would put off some of the garments that they were wearing and put on others specifically for taking out what they had burned mm. um, and bring it into a clean place. And then they were to put the other clothes back on. And then it says, the fire shall ever be burning upon the altar. It shall never go out. So like, mm. God's constantly cleansing us of things yes. and keep the spirit of God alive in us. Yeah. Oh, man, it's a big deal. I mean, you got to be intentional. It's not just willy-nilly. I'm just doing the best I can, brother. How you doing, brother? Best I can. You know what? God specifically, there's things about this Christian walk. Start with that new life. Start with the cross. Get that new man. And then that old man's dead. You just got to start putting it off and, and walking by faith, walking in the strength of his word. Um, Galatians 5.16. Galatians 5, the fruit of the spirit, right? I mean, to the Bible students, you guys know the fruit singular of the spirit well i got some of it no you got all of it it's fruit you got the spirit you got it all but he says this i say tom walk in the spirit and you won't fulfill the love god why do i just keep drinking beer all the time you know that, that's something i struggle with my, a lot of my life what, why do you keep going to the bar after work <laughs> you know oh well maybe i need to put that off <laughs> you know uh but walk in the spirit uh Walk it, you know what, Lord, what would you have me do? I mean, you got to apply scripture to every area of your life and see how, what, what does God say about it? Do you put it on? Do you put it off? Do you need to change garments to deal with it? Do you need to, I mean, how, you got to be intentional about your Christian life. Um, I love uh, just that I, just the, those words, loose him, let him go. Words of a king to his creation. Powerful words of life for you and I today. So long sin, loose him, let him go. I think it's interesting. Jesus, he, 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 he's frustrated with them, with the religious crowd. Do you understand the words coming out of my mouth? You guys, I, it's an old movie. Right? Chris Rock, he's talking to an international student or a guy. The guy's not deaf, but you know. But Jesus says, why do you not understand my speech? <laughs> so I thought, well, maybe this was 2020 version. Uh, um, but you know why? You know why so many people don't get this crucified life? Or they, you never see evidence of the Christian life. You never see them victorious. Golly, Tom, they look just like everybody else on Monday. Well, I wonder if they're part of that many that was mentioned you know what? Many in Matthew 7, he said, will stand before me. He says, you know what? I never knew you. You never put on Christ. You never received my gift because he says, you're of your father, the devil. The lust of your father you'll do. There's no truth in him. And then he asked, he, in John 8 at the end, he says, and because, and because I tell you the truth, you believe me not. God's word is truth. God is seeking to save mankind. You know what? There's a specific way. It's called Jesus Christ. You've got to receive that new man. And then when, after you get that new man, man, you know, apply the scripture. Start putting these things off. Start putting these things on. But you're no longer dead. You're no longer bound to sin. Can you go back to that real quick? You're no longer bound to sin. What we got? Hey, hey, Michael puts it on the Google Drive now. Praise <laughs> the Lord. Uh, because he says, I'm the resurrection and the life. But I think it's interesting at the end of the verse, a question, you know what, I would ask everybody here. I wish I could ask. I wish Alan would let me stand at the pulpit and ask this. Believest thou this? Do you guys believe that? Do you believe that Jesus is the resurrection and the life? And based on that head knowledge, I was at the mall yesterday talking to some uh, high school students about Jesus. And you know what? They believe in the cross. They believe, yeah, I believe in Jesus. Yeah, I believe that he rose from the dead. Do you know him? Eh. You know, just, just they, they have a head knowledge, but they don't have a, a personal. They, they go to Blue Springs High School. Matter of fact, I invited them over to meet you guys. Hey, man, we got a college class. We'd love to help you guys. We got whatever. I mean, whatever I can do to draw them in, right? But do you believe that? If you believe it, act on it. Make a decision. Receive that gift. Um, gosh, that's, uh, believe us now this, if you do, you know what, it's going to motivate you to take D2.
It's going to motivate you to come to Jamaica with us, reach people for Christ. It's going to motivate you to go to Bibles and breakfast. When you, when, you understand, when you believe that Jesus is the resurrection and the life, it changes the way you walk. It's a game changer to your life. You're, you're no longer that old man. You are born again. You're in new life. I think many times, because, because we, just, we, we don't put off that thing covering our face and we still feel the wrapping of this old flesh, we think that we're still bound to sin. But it's a lie. Satan's a liar. And, and don't believe him. He's uh, He was a murderer from the beginning, and the truth abode not in him. There's no truth in him. So, love you guys. Appreciate you guys. Praying for you guys. Uh, somebody pray us out of here. And stay connected with Instagram, with Twitter, with Facebook. We're trying to get social media up and running to better communicate with everybody. Pray somebody pray us out of here.